Good morning, church. Welcome to Palm City United Methodist Church. This is to the contemporary service here at the church. My name is Tony Rook. I'm the contemporary worship director here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule, your busy week, um, so we can get together and we can worship together. Um, for those of you in person, thank you for uh, continuing as we, you know, try to keep everybody safe. Uh, for those of you worshiping with us online, uh, either live or in the future, thank you so much. Um, if you are worshiping with us online on Facebook or YouTube, if you wouldn't mind clicking on the link in the description so you can fill out the online connection card. We want to make sure we are part of your life and that we know that you are here. Um, you can also fill out the online prayer request form um, if there's anything you'd like for us to be praying about uh, in the next week. Um, again, church, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, so let's get into worship.
And all I could see was a struggle Haunted by ghosts that have lived in my past Bound up shackles of all of my failures Wondering how long is this gonna last And you look at this prisoner And say to me, son It's the fighting of a fight that's already been won And I am real Set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains And wipe away every stain Now I'm not who I used to be I am pray with me, church. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for showing up. Thank you for not 
not ever leaving. Thank you for hanging on to us. Through the worst times, through the best times, you are always working for our prosperity so that we know that we are loved and we know that we are your children and that you have your hands wrapped around us. Thank you that you are that God, that you are that Father. Even when sometimes it feels like that's an example that we don't know what even looks like. Thank you that you still are that and you still work for that and you are trying to show us and love us every single day and trying to paint that picture of our Heavenly Father for us. Thank you that we get together, that we can get together and worship together again. Thank you for the things that we take for granted that you work to give us. I ask today that you be people who are struggling with the weights of life, whether that's physical or mental, financial, intellectual, psychological. There are so many things that want to burden us and want to break us down. But you have that weight and you carry it with us and you don't give us anything we can't carry. Thank you that, thank you that you are that God. I ask today that you speak through Pastor Bruce. Give us something this week through his mouth that we can go out and be more fulfilled and be who we need to be in this community and in each, each of our communities wherever we go this week. Let us be you and let us show people the hands of God and let us be that for other people just like you've been that for us. I thank you again, God, that you are God and you are our Father. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. like a hurricane, I am a tree, and in me, grief is wind and mercy, when all of a sudden, I am unaware of the afflictions eclipsed by glory.
Dustin, who's over there leading. Thank you for your leadership over in the contemporary service. And before the, I read the scripture and, uh, and uh, offer the sermon, I want to ask the Lindyke family to come forward. Uh, and I'm going to ask you all to come forward and put your backs to Ber- Pastor Bernie and I and face the congregation and, and the camera for, uh, for others. Come right down here, Evelyn, and turn around. Sure. And turn around. There you go. The Lindyke family have, they're a military family. Uh, Matt is uh, in the uh, Marines. He's a major in the Marines. They have been here for two years and have been a part of this, uh, this family for two years. Uh, and now they're, of course, uh, as is usual, some of you military families are shaking your heads. Uh, the Lindyke family, the military, saw fit to move them away from us uh, against all of our hopes and desires and prayers, but it's inevitable that that happens. But, uh, but Mac is on a, on a track, uh, and, uh, and uh, he is obedient to, uh, to the Marine Corps, so uh, they will be leaving us. But we just want to say uh, thank you, Matt, for your service. Thank you, Jenna, for your service as a, as a military spouse. Uh, and we, uh, we uh, I want to offer a prayer of, uh, uh, to send them off and God's protection in their lives. Uh, um, oh, let me, let me introduce the, the children. This is Matt and Jenna. And then the, the oldest daughter is Evelyn. And Kenton, the, uh, the, uh, uh, next to Evelyn, Kenton actually is part of our day school. And then Weston uh, and then Madeline. This is our Lindyke family. You can see they're going to take most of our children's ministry with them when they leave. <laughs> but let's, uh, let's all pray for this family as they, as they go to their next appointment. Almighty and gracious God, we give thanks for our military uh, and military families, our military who place themselves in danger to, to, to protect the, uh, the peace in, uh, in the world. We give thanks for Matt and Jenna and these children and their faithfulness to the cause of Christ. And we ask that uh, you bless them and watch over them and, and lead them and protect Matt especially, but protect this whole family as they go to their next appointment, uh, their, next, uh, their next service uh, in, the, in the military. Watch over them, we pray. And uh, hopefully, dear Lord, in a couple of years, maybe they'll come back to Tampa. That is our hope and prayer. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks, Matt. We appreciate all of our military families and pray for them uh, and uh, love to have them here. The bad thing about it is they end up leaving us uh, and makes us uh, all very sad. But it's good to have them have the Lindyke family here for two years. They have been a part of this uh, community of faith, very faithful in, uh, in attendance and uh, in, in, in worship and every other way. And we, uh, we just appreciate them so much and all of our military families. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, as I said earlier, um, uh, the scripture lesson for today's message is the Pentecost reading the second chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 21. Will you hear now the word of the Lord uh, as given to us out of the book of Acts? When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, And a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not these all who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. 
all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall, see, shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above, and signs on earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great glorious day. Then everyone, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So after leading the 12 disciples for three years at the Passover dinner before Jesus' arrest, he informed them that he would be leaving them. And he was trying to assure them that God the Father would send to them another, another advocate, another comforter, someone else to guide them, someone else to teach them. Uh, to guide them and comfort them in ways that Jesus wasn't able to do when he was with them. But the assurance of the promised guide and the comforter was met with skepticism. It was met with a lack of understanding, of objections and, and, and concerns. They, they just didn't understand. And Simon Peter said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you going, and why can't I follow you? I'll follow you anywhere. I'll, I'll lay down my life for you. Thomas, Thomas said, Lord, uh, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Philip said, look, Jesus, just, just show us the Father, and we'll be satisfied. We'll be content if you'll just show us the Father. And, uh, and Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, uh, tell me again, how is it that, that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? They didn't understand. Trying to help them understand, Jesus said, it, 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 listen, it's imperative that I go away. If I don't go away, the advocate or the comforter will not come. But when I go, I'll send him to you. This is the spirit of truth, Jesus says. And when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth and to all understanding. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. You already know him because he's been with you all along, but soon he will be in you. Brothers, listen, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you like a bunch of orphans. You're concerned about me leaving, yes, but remember what I have taught you and live by what I have taught you. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. There's a lot of redundancy, a lot of redundancy in, in Jesus' last discussion with them before his arrest. I'm assuming in an attempt to help them see, but they just didn't understand. Then on the evening of the day of his resurrection, when he appeared to the disciples, he tried to explain again. Why are you frightened? Why are you doubtful? Don't you remember uh, that, uh, that it, this is what the Scripture says, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and the forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed? You are the only eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses of all that has happened, so I'm sending the promise of the Father to you. And when you receive the promise, when you receive the promise, you will be clothed with power to become effective witnesses, not any ordinary power, but the power that comes from above. Now, I can imagine them saying to themselves when Jesus departed after the first resurrection appearance, what, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? Preaching repentance and the forgiveness of sins. We're just ordinary people and ordinary, living ordinary lives. Simple fishermen, tax collectors. We're, uh, we're followers, not prophets or preachers. Uh, uh, and what is this power he's talking about? Power from on high. 
They just didn't understand. And just before Jesus ascended into heaven, after appearing to them and others over a period of 40 days, presenting to himself alive, as I said last week, by many convincing proofs, they still didn't understand and ask him, Lord, is this the time? Is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus said, uh, I'm sure in exasperation, do you not remember, do you remember how John the baptism, uh, how John baptized you with water? Well, soon, well, soon you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And if you will wait, if you will wait for the promise, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be the ones to share my story, to share the message of repentance and forgiveness with others. But now to the ends of the earth. Again, I can imagine them asking each other after Jesus ascended out of their sight, what? what? How are we going to be witnesses to the ends of the earth? Jesus is the mouthpiece of, mouth, mouthpiece of this movement. He always delivered the message of repentance and forgiveness. Without him uh, with us, it's just hopeless. Besides that, none of us have traveled outside of Israel. We don't have passports. We haven't worked in three years. How can we afford to buy plane tickets and fly all over the place? We can't put enough money together right now to buy us all a cab fare. My wife and my children need me at home for a while. Witnesses, witnesses to the ends of the earth, I just don't get it. They didn't understand. And even though Jesus had told them time and time again, they really didn't know what was coming next. Matthew's record of the ascension that we didn't use last week, when they, it says when they saw him, they worshiped him, but, but some of the disciples, some of them doubted. After they had seen him, after they had been with him for three years, after they had witnessed the crucifixion and then seen him alive for 40 days, some of his closest follow, followers still doubted at the ascension. But thank goodness. Thank goodness they trusted him enough to stay in Jerusalem and wait. You know, sometimes the hardest thing to do is to wait. And to, uh, uh, thank goodness they stayed in Jerusalem uh, and decided to stay in Jerusalem and wait for the promise. The promise of the Father that Jesus had been telling them about. And with a, with a lack of understanding, some of them still doubting, Luke tells us that they went ahead and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and worshiping God in the temple and devoted themselves to prayer. Fifty days after the resurrection, ten days after, the, after Jesus ascended into heaven, the festival day of Pentecost had arrived, the feast of weeks that brought uh, 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 devout Jews from every nation under heaven uh, to Jerusalem to celebrate, uh, to celebrate Pentecost. And 120 of Jesus' followers were all together in one place. Some believe they were in the same upper room uh, where, where Jesus had his last, last dinner with the, with the disciples. They were all in one accord, devoted themselves to prayer, and suddenly there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind that filled the place where they were. Not necessarily a mighty wind which would have taken, a, taken the house down, but Luke says there was, uh, there was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them and a flame rested on each of them. Now Luke doesn't elaborate on the wind and the fire, the tongues of fire, uh, nor does he try to explain it away uh, as if to say to us, suffice it to say that these Israelites understood that the wind and the flames meant that the presence of God was in that room and the promise the promise Jesus told them of earlier was being realized. And Luke says, all of them, all of them were filled by the Holy Spirit. Every one of them. All of them. Peter and James and John and to the last unnamed follower, all filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember Jesus' words, this is the spirit of truth. You know him because he's been with you all along, but soon he will be in you. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, all of them, all 120, not, not just the 11 disciples, but every man, every woman in the room. And I have to believe that there were youth and maybe even children there who were filled with the Holy Spirit that day. 
And they began to speak in other languages, not unknown languages and unknown tongues, but other languages. And all of the Jews from every nation under heaven that were gathered in Jerusalem celebrating the festival of Pentecost heard the sound of the mighty wind and perhaps thinking there was a tornado or a storm that had taken out part of the city, rushed to the scene. And instead of seeing roofs taken off, rooftops taken off uh, and houses taken down, they saw and heard these men and women who were obviously from Galilee speaking about God's deeds and power in languages that they all could understand. Perplexed. You would be and I would be too perplexed and bewildered and amazed and said, what in the world is going on here? What does this mean? Others, of course, attributed to, the, uh, attributed to them drinking too much wine. After all, they were led by some backwater fishermen from Galilee. So probably they, they started this celebration of Pentecost too early and were already drunk. Plutarch reports that, the, that, that wine augments prophetic speech, but it wasn't wine, Peter says. Uh, Peter, who just earlier, who didn't fully comprehend, finally now understood and empowered by this promise, preached the first sermon of this new Christian movement. Men, men and women of Judea, everyone in Jerusalem, listen to what I have to say. We are not drunk. It's only, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Even us Galileans don't get drunk that early. No, what's happening here is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And Peter and the other followers who were filled with the Holy Spirit on that day received the promise. And they finally, they finally understood and Peter and the other followers who were filled with the Holy Spirit came out of the shadows of fear to be witnesses for, for Christ and boldly proclaim the good news. And Peter, standing with the others, spoke of Christ being crucified and Christ ra being raised from the dead. And the people who heard it, the scripture says, were cut to their hearts and said, what shall we do? What should we do? And the answer was, repent and be baptized in the name of, of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the promise, the promise, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's interesting that Peter's message is that salvation comes to everyone who calls, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. Not everyone who behaves a certain way or believes a certain way, but everyone who calls on the Lord for help shall be saved. And on the day of Pentecost, uh, uh, you know, they tell us we shouldn't worry about numbers, especially during COVID. We shouldn't worry about worship attendance and numbers. But Luke recorded numbers that day. He recorded that there were 3,000 souls baptized and taken into the church on the day of Pentecost. That's a, and baptized, that's a lot of baptizing, Pastor Bernie. If, if the, if the uh, 12 did it, that was 250 people baptized, each, each one of them. But maybe they divided it up by, with uh, all 120. That was only 25 people apiece being baptized. But Pentecost... Pentecost is the birthday of the church. Pentecost uh, is, is enlivened and empowered the church that day, and it is the, the, the Holy Spirit is still available to enliven the church today. Pentecost introduces the Holy Spirit's work in the church, and it is the ultimate gift from God that just keeps on giving. 3,000 souls on that day. The promise, however, the promise, however, is, is for you and your children and for all who are far off. If you, if, did you think you were referred to in the scripture? Peter refers to you. Luke refers to you and to me. Those who are far off. He's talking about you and he's talking about me. Yates Pool is a famous oil field in West Texas. During the Depression, this field was a, uh, a sheep ranch owned by the man named Yates. And he wasn't able to make enough money on his ranching operation to make his mortgage payment and came very close to losing his ranch. With little money for clothes and food, his family, like many others during the Depression, years had to live on government subsidy. And day after day, Yates would would look over the rolling hills of his ranch and pray and wonder how he would be able to pay the bills. 
One day, a crew of men from an oil company came out into the area and convinced Yates that there might possibly be oil on his land, and they asked permission to drill a wildcat test well, and Yates agreed and signed a lease contract. At a little deeper than a thousand feet, the drillers struck a huge oil reserve. The first well came in at 80,000 barrels a day and many more wells. Many more wells were drilled. Uh, some, uh, more than, some produced more than twice that uh, as the first one. In the 60s, after oil had been pumped for more than 30 years, a government test of just one of the wells showed that uh, it still had a potential to flow 125,000 barrels of oil a day. In the year 2000, Yates Field was still one of the top 10 producers of oil in the United States. Now, Yates owned and worked this land for years and lived in poverty because he wasn't aware of the oil reserves that lie just below the surface. Is this a picture of the modern church? We live and we work in the church in our own power but oftentimes in spiritual poverty. But we too, we too have been promised, been promised the Holy Spirit and his energizing power. The promise is ours too. When you and you and you and you and you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive power. You will receive effectiveness to be my witnesses. But I wonder, I wonder if the church today just isn't able to, to tap into the unlimited resources that lie, that lie just below the surface. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning. Once again, my name is Pastor Justin. If you would, please uh, pray with me now. Dear Heavenly Father, you are great and awesome in your power and in your majesty. By your power, you spoke and brought forth life and light. You brought forth humanity. In your power, you, you determined that we should not be bound in our sin any longer. And so you sent your Son and crushed death and sin and evil once and forever. By your power, you sent your Spirit to give us the opportunity to live through your power. When we don't have it on our own, through your power, you give us patience with our children. Through your power, you give us grace with our neighbors through your power. You give us the boldness to proclaim in our lives and in our speech the joy and the hope and the salvation and the grace and the mercy and the love that is available to all people. God, as your children, we ask that we would not be reliant on our own power. But that just like Yates Field, we would tap into the power that has been provided freely for us and that we would seize that power and that we would use it to glorify and magnify your name. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this church. We thank you for this life. We thank you for the opportunities that you place in front of us even when they look like hardships or challenges. Lord, we lift up this community to you and we pray for them in their need, those things that are spoken and those that are unspoken. Lord, we know you see it all by your Spirit. Give us grace as we leave this place, O oh Lord, to live in your power. In Jesus' name, amen. I would encourage you now to respond to God's good word and his faithfulness to us by offering God's tithes and our offerings in one of the many ways that we've made available uh, during the pandemic. You can text Palmacia to 77977. We have an app. We have a website. If you are uh, present in person, we have uh, plates on the way out. But let us continue in worship and empower in the Spirit this morning.
many to count To say that I love you To worship you now Your love is perfect but Your heart is kind I'm yours forever Forever you're mine Jesus, the anthem of my heart Jesus, the anchor of my soul I'm overwhelmed by all you are Oh, how I love you You call me beloved But you call me friend Your grace is our word
Church, I just want to say thank you for your continued commitment to this service and to this church. Have a wonderful week, and we can't wait to see you again next week.